I bought a new 10 inch cast iron top table saw. It's a uh, rigid uh, hybrid style and I like it a lot better than my previous one which was just a job site style uh, contractor saw which uh, was okay. It was very portable but not very precise and certainly not very heavy like this thing is. Um, I got everything adjusted uh, in terms of the fence and uh, the blade height and uh, the uh, cut width index and so forth. Everything is adjusted nicely, but uh, I found that the one thing that isn't was uh, the alignment of the blade. And it appears that this saw was shipped to me this way that uh, the front of the blade at the infeed side is uh, a little bit too far that way, and the back of it, the outfeed side, is a little bit too far that way. So putting a dial indicator on the miter uh, attachment and sliding it back and forth in the miter slot. Uh, I can see how aligned or misaligned the blade is with respect to the miter slots. And I already checked both miter slots and they're both, uh, they seem to be perfectly parallel. Um, if they're out from each other, it's less than a thousandth of an inch uh, for the length of the saw, so that's really good. But from the rear of the blade, um, which is, this is the outfeed side of the saw and that's the infeed side. From the rear of the blade, the change is about just a little over 10 thousandths of an inch, maybe more like 12 thousandths of an inch. And of course, when I do this, I keep the pressure from my hand pushing this way on the uh, miter gauge so that it's uh, always riding along and referencing this side of the miter slot. And that seems to be uh, accurate enough to come up with a good measurement. And if I jiggle it back and forth in the slot, you can see that the slot has about uh, three one thousandths or so of uh, play in it. But uh, if I keep this pressed up against this side of the slot, it's plenty straight enough and good enough to make a good measurement. So I know this saw is really popular now uh, for good reason, it's a really good saw. And I would imagine that if mine was shipped this way, there's a good chance that most or all of them are all slightly out, uh, hopefully less than this one. Um, so I'm going to make a quick demonstration of how to adjust that. Okay, so once you get the back cover of the saw off, you're looking at the underside of the cast iron table, and this whole thing is the motor and the blade assembly and the adjustment mechanisms and so forth. And um, this whole thing is suspended by a carrier and trunnion assembly uh, held up by four of these uh, Allen head cap screws. So there's one, two, and two more. There's one back there. I don't know if you can see it. And the way you adjust this is um, by loosening these two here and then Rigid recommends taking a screwdriver like this and using this um, just this cross member support beam here too which is just stamped sheet metal and use that for leverage and use the tip of the screwdriver to gently push the uh, the whole carriage assembly with the motor and the blade left or right uh, by just enough to get it in line. So we'll see if that works. Okay, so screwdriver's in and need to move it about. I'm going to start with around five thousandths and see what that gets us. Okay. A little bit more. Okay, I lied a little bit more. OK, 
Okay, that's good right there. I read about 46 thousandths at the back of the blade. And I don't know if it's focused. Yeah, there it is. About 46 thousandths at the back of the blade. So that's good. Uh, now just to tighten those two screws back up and put the cover back on. Uh, hopefully tightening those uh, locking screws won't uh, throw this back out again. So I'll do that and then check it one more time. Okay, this is after it's tightened again. Okay, that did change it by about three one thousandths to tighten it. Uh, not as bad as it was originally, but still, uh, while well, I have it all apart, I might as well get it just right. Okay, let's check it again. Ah, yeah, I think this time it's good. Reading about 45 thousandths on the front, about 45 on the back. That's really good. Uh, it's got a bit of a uptick there uh, in the middle of the blade. And uh, it's these Freud blades have uh, this zone right here where they change thickness. It's uh, sort of hard to see, but it's right there. And I think that's to reduce vibration or uh, increase stiffness or something like that. But uh, whatever it is, it's... Uh, uh, not something I'll take into account because uh, if I measure from about the tooth on the back and about the tooth on the front it's the same so that's just fine and uh, of course I can double check that too by rotating the blade in place also this checks to see if there's a wobble in the arbor which there really isn't it's all within about one thousandth that's great. Before I close this up, you can see inside uh, what the dust collection setup is for this saw. Uh, it seems to work pretty well um, in the somewhat limited use I've had with it so far, but uh, it's got this chute, which is a four-sided uh, upside-down pyramid, uh, and it goes to a four-inch dust collection port on the bottom. And uh, since right now I'm not working with a four-inch hose setup, I have this uh, reducing collar that I made out of wood and that just fits a regular shop vac hose and a shop vac of course is a lower volume but very high velocity um, uh, you would think it might not work that great but it actually works pretty well um, again with my somewhat limited experience with this saw I've only had it for a few weeks now uh, that does seem to keep up and do pretty nicely with it Okay, now that this thing is all adjusted, uh, it's time to move on to other things like uh, maybe make a zero clearance insert next and on to some more projects. Thanks for watching.